Hello everybody, Winnie Storm here, and welcome back to Europa Universe Alice for the Horse Lord Mega Campaign. In the last episode, we kind of just coasted along for a little bit, just you know, working on getting you know, tech done. We we're able to get our military tech increased. We're now up to eleven. No, not eleven. We're up to ten. We we will be going to eleven soon. Actually, pretty soon. You only need four ninety-two power. It might actually be worth doing that. Combat with, increase my cavalry fire and shock. Or no, infantry shock, cavalry fire. It might be worth grabbing that. Ahead of the actual ideas, but we'll, we'll see. Um, and also, we were taking a look at kind of ter some territorial expansion prospects. And one of them is Gotland here, this little island. Um, the issue is, because they're not part of the HRE, right? They're orthodox. And the issue with them is that they are an ally of Byzantium. I was going ahead and looking at Byzantium in the ledger and noticed that I have a bigger army than they do. And I have a larger manpower pool than they do. And I have better military tech than they do now that we're at 10. So, there may be a potential here that we could go to war uh, with Byzantium. Well, we'll go to war with Gotland, and then by extension Byzantium, to take that little island and maybe see what we can do, you know, with Byzantium. Uh, and uh, see if we can't maybe get some stuff from them, you know. At the very least, war reparations, large piles of ducats, perhaps even some territory uh, from from them. So we'll see about that. Um, I've been kind of looking at things here, and there are some things I want to do before that because we're going to need to land an army in Gotland. And I was looking at Gotland in the ledger, and they have six thousand troops. 10,800 manpower. Um, and they actually do have better military technology than we do. You know, I was thinking of taking this 8,000 troop stack, but I'm not sure that's going to be entirely enough. So what I'm going to do is we're going to grab this 9,000 stack over here. And we're going to bring that uh, over. Uh, we should be okay. This colony is almost established. I mean, we have very aggressive natives, but we have a, you know, we have good native policy, so it should hopefully not be a problem. And as far as the actual war itself, peace has declared war on Bohemia. Okay. We lost that Cassus Belli. Okay, that's fine. No, we're not giving you military access. No, we're not giving you military access either. So there is Pisa, but I think like this is all Pisa also ha owns all of this. Franconia, no. I was just saying, we'll probably want to build up a, a treasury before we go to war. A nice war chest. And... I was like Byzantium is dealing with uh, some rebels. Tangri Zealots. Oh, nice. So what I was thinking is actually, we might want to fall back. Let's see, yep, there. Carnton, Protestant Reform Church reject 
incense. Many Reformed and Protestant theologians have come to reject not only the elaborately decorated nature of Catholic churches, but also the use of incense in religious rituals. The use of scents, candles, and incense is now increasingly considered sacrilege, and as a result, the demand for all types of incense that for over a thousand years have pulled frankincense and myrrh from the East to Europe has finally begun to decrease. Again, 15 points of fervor. Price of incense drops by 25%. Okay. Death of Merchant. One of the greatest and richest men in the Bulgarian Empire has died without an heir. He was a well-known patron of religion and the arts. The state needs the money. Gained a bunch of ducats. Used them as he would have. Gained a skill one artist. Uh, stability cost modifier. I know, just to rece receive our patronage. He needs skill three, theologian. You know what? The state needs the money. We're going to take the ducats. I'm going to park them somewhere where they're not going to sit there and suffer attrition. There you go. Yeah, so we're going to pull back, and we're going to let the Byzantine army actually come into our territory. And then hopefully get stuck sieging one of these forts. Then we'll counterpunch and see if we can't drive them back out, and then uh, make our own assault. Okay, well there is... Let's see, if we merge these guys, it brings us up to 11, 3, and 3. A bit of an odd army. That's all right. It should work. I'm wondering if I shouldn't wait until I can get the military tech 11 first to get two techs up on them just to really improve our advantage when will we get this tech november of 1554 so it'll be two more years uh, what if i were to make some adjustments here um Let's do a military power focus. And... Maybe promote that advisor. Now how long will it take to get that tech? January 1554. The France is preparing to attack Castile. Devoutness. Administrative power. Tons of true faith. Yet yeah, we'll go for that. We have... Encourage local trades. National unrest minus one. Production efficiency plus ten. There we go. Next one is going to be Ruthless Tributes, National Tax Modifier, plus 10%. And then we're going to get Conscription, National Manpower Modifier, plus 15%. So it is really pump up that manpower pool, which is going to give us much better endurance in wars. Alright, so you guys actually march down to Stockholm. I was using these three ships for exploring, but I think we're going to want them actually in the Navy. Merge them in. All 
All right, you guys come into port. Merge selected units. Do we need to do any upgrades? Doesn't look like it. Royal marriage offer from Mongolia. Yeah, we'll accept that. Oh, looks like these Tengri Zealots are giving the Byzantines fits. Come on, I want to get that tech because I want to take advantage of this. Seventy-seven thousand troops, eighty-six thousand manpower. To be well, January of fifteen fifty-four. Okay. Do I still have a commander? There's, I have no leaders. Okay. Take a look at our colonies. Almost there. There we go. We invest in the matchlock musket. Do it. The arquebus proved to be a very effective weapon for arm penetration. The results was the armor began to get heavier and resist to resist its fire. Lar larger musket could deliver a heavier round, offering better armor penetration. Combo with increased by two. Fire and shock up. You can now build a weapon manufactory. Supplies, grain. I'm not sure where one builds a weapon manufactory. And I can build a manufactory. Hmm. No, I probably actually want to wait for the military power to increase a little bit because we're going to need it to make generals. Diplo power. Spend a little bit of that. Nineteen. All right, actually. Let's do this. Let's see. We can do estates. The merchant guilds.
Merchant Guild's influence is 40 or greater. Well, they need 40 influence? And I can increase our loyalty by, or their influence by 10. And I can't get an admiral ship. Grant general ship, they'll gain 20 influence. Which I can't, I don't really wanna do. Because Well, we're just gonna have to actually wait for some military power so I can just roll up a general. Because I don't want to do this without at least one commander. And what does it cost? It costs 45. Yeah, we can roll, recruit an admiral. Let's do that. Not great, but it's better than nothing. Conflict and protests over taxes, corporations, port duties, navy requisitions, trade, and customs policies were quite frequent, often had counterproductive effects. Reduce trade investment, lose 50 diplomat power, merchant guilds gain 10 loyalty. Lose the mercantilism. Uh, we'll lose the Dipple Power, fine. Come on, we just need one more month. Now, I wonder if I shouldn't... Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to recruit the general up here. Oh, it's going to only cost 45. All right, do it. He's a two-star. Nice. All right. Gotland. Declare war. Take them. Mongolia will... Accept. Yeah, come on in. It'll cost us 10 favors. Well, I mean, because we, we help them out, so it's only right that they then help us out. So, do it. I don't think they've been called to arms yet. Let's get, the, let's get the fleet out there. Gonna have to do a amphibious invasion, essentially. Hopefully. Well, we have equivalent military tech. Our general's not much worse than theirs. Oh, we need to, um... What's going to cost us military power to raise war taxes? Okay, well, we managed to defeat their army. And so far... 
No, Byzantium is part of this. Okay. I don't see any Byzantine armies. An offer to rent Condontieri from Vastergotland if we do not respond. No, we don't need Condontieri. There's their fleet. 41 ships. Give them a little bit more time. Probably wait until spring. Alright, the levy. In time, many of the everyday concerns in the life of our empress and predecessors Oh, and her predecessors has become the subject of ceremony. Being able to attend the bedroom of the ruler as she dresses, for instance, is considered by many to be the best way to gain the ear of the empress. An elaborate court life will certainly limit the power of our nobles to plot against us in their countryside properties, but it could also prove quite expensive. Denying them the right to be part of daily life of the empress entirely, on the other hand, would also limit their influence when the nobility will likely resent it. Loses 10 loyalty. We can't really afford to lose the ducats. What's their loyalty right now? 50? Let's keep it on a modest level. Alright. Eric's Fjord has become self sustaining. Perfect. And that means we're going to send the. Colonist out there. Okay, well, if they're not coming for me, then we're going to send... We're gonna send all of our troops into bowl and the Byzantine territory. Alright, our Prince Consort Bulger has impressed many men and women at court with his sharp and witness of knowledge of the natural world. He's long been a collector of tomes on botany and chemistry, and he corresponds with several of our generation's brightest minds. Okay, so do we want to bring in an advisor or gain 50 admin power? I want the admin power. Do it. Uh, let's send the transports back to port. For the time being, because as soon as we complete that siege, there's going to be a big naval battle. And what we might want to do is go ahead and roll up... I guess I can't while there's sieges going on. No, they're still at 85% influence. I don't want them to go over 100% because that's when things bad stuff starts happening. Ugh. Oh well. Better than nothing, I suppose. Truce with Nazis have ended. Siege of Gotland is complete. We are knocking out their navy. Perfect.
Whoa, 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 whoa. No. There. That, that would be better. All right, let's actually move that general. Let's move you over here. Okay, no, we can't. We can't advance until we finish the siege of that of that fort. Let's get our whole army down here. We have to bust through this fort. We're going to bust through both of those forts before we can get down to uh, Constantinople itself. But that's going to be our goal. Get through there, siege these two, get down here, take the capital. The Mongolians, unfortunately, are having particularists. You can't seem to shake those rebels. For the time being, we'll keep the, f the fleet up here. Spirit de corps. The strain that the military lifestyle puts the men who serve uh, under can, under good circumstances, lead to the development of a spirit of belonging and cooperation that greatly strengthens the armed forces. During the recent conflict with Byzantium, we have seen clear signs that our troops are working better together. They have formed strong bonds of loyalty and duty to the Bulgar Empire crown that would have seemed hard to imagine just a few years ago. We gain 3% army professionalism. Good. We have reached... May build supply depots. National decisions available. State firearm regiments. While technology is still in its infancy, firearms can be a deadly force on any battlefield. In order to be efficient, however, firearms require regular training and a steady supply of ammunition. For regular levy army, this level of proficiency can be hard to maintain. A soldier that has to go home to tend his fields is not one that will regularly exercise with his weapon. While we cannot change our entire army structure in one stroke, we can ensure that the co a corps of highly trained salaried troops specialize in these weapons. What will that do? Our land maintenance modifier increases by 15%. Army drill gain modifier plus 40%. Sure, do it. I mean, we're not drilling at the moment, so... We discovered a Byzantine spy. Barrage, blow down the walls. There we go. From Bavaria. No, no. Nobody. Marital bliss. His Majesty the Prince Consort is, of course, a constant companion and good advisor to his own in his own right. However, apart from that role, our Prince Consort is also representative of the Crown, to the Rosat House, and vice versa. See, today, Bulgar seems very pleased to announce his family has decided to show its support for the throne and for the Union. May this Union bring benefits to us both. We must avoid indebting ourselves to the family.
I'll take the prestige. Ah, there's the Byzantine army. Alright, how many troops are we looking at? Um, a lot. Yeah, we've lost claims. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's leave... Let's leave two armies here. Let's gather our forces into one big... Big blob here. Uh, opposing factions in the military are advocating different tactics. We need to back one of them. In this bickering, we must always attack. Siege ability plus 10%. Fort defense. Um, the Empress favors offense. I guess we'll go with that. I thought I was going to leave one of these guys back here. Um... Yeah, you, you stay here. Okay. Alright, 83,000 troops. Begin marching down here. They're going to try and attack me over there. That's fine. Alright, actually, we're getting toward the end of this episode here. Hopefully, the siege will complete. Yes, there we go. Siege completed. And then we're going to start working our way... You head all the way there. You start working on provinces. Alright. So we are marching our army into position. We should be able to defeat both those armies. Well, let me let me just speed things up here just a second. marching they're marching over there okay actually I think they're probably marching over here there's 35,000 troops You know what, we're going to send this army in here, and we're going to go ahead and pause our record, uh, pause the episode here, or end the episode here, 
and we will continue working on this when we come back. So, for now, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.